Yeah, so I'm actually, it, one of my buyers that I'm working with, uh, it's funny because I've sold him more than three deals, but um, three deals recently. And one of them, he got, he made a nice profit. And because I was a wholesaler on it, I had all the before photos. So what did I do? I, I went through it. I did a walkthrough video. I did, I interviewed him and I actually posted up on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't watched that video, it's up there on YouTube. And uh, we are watching or we're, he has two more flips that he's in the middle of and he keeps sending me these progress photos and videos and walkthroughs. And it, it's it's like, dude, that's awesome. Like the, the decision that he made and what he did to do that and it is really crazy so we're going to do the same thing on the next on the next two as well so it's uh it, it's really cool to learn the process from you know, from a flipper doing it like i'm in the trenches <clears throat> with him i'm not making the decisions obviously but like he's telling me what he's doing and the reason why you know so 100 percent get that yeah so um, and I think you already asked this and this one from Jeff G about the flipping over 200 houses and not having a lot of reserves or whatever. I mean, you pay back your, your investors pretty well in order to, to have that. And I'm sure you guys have reserves somewhere. No, uh, it, for cash I, flows. I do think though, I do think Jeff's asking a, a really great question and, and um, I'll bring it back up here. Yeah. yeah. I, it's funny. I think it's, it's a question I've asked myself a hundred times too. Here's, but, but here's here's the situation. So you were doing all these houses, you know, the majority majority go well, and so you've got money coming in. And we are we're, when you're scaling, you are reinvesting uh, a lot. And what we've started doing in the last year that's really impacted cash flow is these these short-term rentals and we don't have a perfect uh funding solution in place yeah with short-term rentals but we put about you know a hundred thousand dollars and we're starting to go out and find some great investors who want to be a part and and and, and kind of come in come in on a property and say hey i like that lake house i will put in a hundred thousand dollars and it goes on top of that house but right now we've done like seven now we're actually working on more but we've got five launched we've done seven it's a hundred thousand each so you mm. and they're just they're locked in the house. I mean they're they're in that house. They're not coming out until you're kind of you, yeah. you start getting the money back slowly. It's very different than flipping. Flipping you get the money back more quickly, not as quickly mm -hmm. as you do, Randy, with wholesale. But uh, <laughs> and, and we do that as well. But but we you know we've spent a lot of time when you're scaling investing in the company. Yep. We love the short term rental business, but it is an unbelievable <laughs> cash crunch to the nth degree, like we haven't quite seen before. And we're figuring out and maybe the, my favorite thing that we did near the end of last year was take our incredible bookkeeper with rei books um kirk and joni and uh we've moved kirk into a fractional cfo position where he can help me i mean we've been threading needles all the time to make the cash flow work um but we're starting to do some real forecasting and stuff like that so we know when houses are closing mm -hmm. when that money's coming back and what we need to legitimately do these short-term rentals because if you know we're gonna do 26. Like, I'm not real good at math here, but if we do 100,000 per house, that's 2.6. So yeah. that money can go, you know, 2.6 million. That money can go pretty darn quickly, and oh, it's yeah. a great and it's a great buy. Like everything's yeah. good. We still the house appraises for a great amount. It's all in there, but we're still on top of the loan that we're getting. We're putting, you know, you know, upwards Extra of money into it. Yeah, of yeah. our own money into that deal. And there it goes and it's just stuck there for a while so so you know you kind of um skimmed over this but you called it a fractional cfo now i've heard this term one time before and i've heard it from one person pace morby and i i heard it from him that's the first time i ever heard something called a fractional cfo <laughs> so for the people who don't know what a fractional, because I've only heard it one other time. So yeah. for the people who don't know what a fractional CFO is, why don't you go ahead and explain what that is? Yeah, sure. It, it's pretty simple. It's it's like it's like a fraction of their time, right? <clears throat> can be can be whatever. You know, we got four different businesses, so it, it's a it's a decent fraction sometimes. But it's taking uh, our bookkeeper, who's got you know mad skills beyond 
bookkeeping and, and could be a C CFO anywhere and wants to kind of stretch his brain and, 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 and dive into the business and understand it. He's a great team fit and phenomenal person, he and his wife both. And mm -hmm. so we pull him into a little bit more than just the bookkeeping where yep. he was creating cash flow reports, uh, you know, obviously doing all of our P&Ls and our balance sheet, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's the basic bookkeeping. But taking that and putting forecasts on top of that and running projections and, and mm -hmm. allowing us to go real live time with, you know, our budget versus actual while houses are going and stuff like that. So it's allowed us to take um, our projects to another level. And you really have to be doing that when you're operating at this kind of volume. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're just spinning with houses and numbers and stuff like that. So that's been uh, it's been a really important part and a big step for us this year is to have Kirk and a fractional CFO. Yeah, but it's just kind of like a part time CFO. He could be a CFO for us, you know, in like two or three other companies at the same time. Got it. So it's not Got it. Yeah. That makes so sense. That, that, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And and that's kind of how it was explained as well. I just wanted for everybody else to know what that was. Because I, like I said, I've only heard it ever one time and that was on a YouTube video. <laughs> so yeah. um, so it's, it is out there, you can do it. Uh, you don't need to play a full-time CFO, um, especially if you don't need one for a full-time. So, um, and then uh, this is this question comes from Andre Kingston. I uh, you know is there a market for short term rentals for Hunter Havens versus the lake house, lake houses and things like that? Um, I mean I kind of understand that question. Do you guys do you guys do? Yeah. Awesome. So so yeah I mean he's just asking it from my understanding. It basically you know is there. Um, it, do short-term rentals work for hunters? Yep. And, and, and the answer there is maybe, you know, like it, it just depends. Like, um, you know, it, as, as an example, we have, we are, we have a JV partnership. Um, this is a lake house, but the example still works. We have a JV partnership with a house in Battle Lake, Minnesota. Um, one of our investors, it was their, it, it was their childhood like cottage that they went to. Mm -hmm. um, nobody lives in Minnesota anymore but they don't want to get rid of it. So the house is free and clear. So since we are deeply involved with this business, we run uh, the Airbnb for them. Uh, and mm. like it covers, they're not like they're, you know, like covers the taxes, covers the maintenance of owning it. They're happy. So, yep. so from that standpoint, if you have a house in the woods and it's paid off, like, a thousand percent you'll be able to figure out how to rent it there's mm -hmm. different levels of airbnbs think of them like hotel brands uh i gotta stop using that example it's a great example <laughs> but i gotta figure out my hotel brands I gotta <laughs> and go with the uh go with the 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 stores the walmarts and i, I was thinking artists. restaurants like you got your mortons you know and you got your yeah like, you, you know what i mean like so what 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 brand are you so if you if mm -hmm. you want a cabin in the woods um, you know, are you going to be like a luxury cabin in the woods? Are you going to be a budget cabin in the woods? Uh, mm -hmm. and then it's just a math equation. Cause you know, for us, what we do is we take a look and we try to say, okay, if, can we get 60% occupancy, you know, on average net net throughout the year for this particular property, what's the average daily rent that we can get for this particular property. Mm -hmm. And does it cover like all the, like the bills, um, and leave profit for us uh to to the number that we're trying to hit so you can absolutely have like a hunter's cabin uh mm -hmm. that makes sense um you know it just depends on the price you know it, so that's kind of a hard one if you have a specific example we could kind of talk that through yeah yeah exactly mind. so i i can i don't have an example but and i completely understand that and <clears throat> for here in michigan and going up north for hunters i think it would definitely work um, you, I think the marketing just needs to be out there for that. So, but I think, especially here in Michigan, you don't have to, you don't have to subject it to just hunters because you can use it all year round, you know, just because it's not on a lake, it's used, if it's up North, it still has, um, you know, the fall leaves and if it's, you know, relatively close to, you know, in town or or the lake, you know, things like that. So yeah. I, you know, all of that. 
I, I think Jeff kind of asked a question that I kind of glossed over what the actual question was. Um, okay. And he, he said, how many lake houses are actually on the water and not a block away? Um, yeah. And originally we took that as like, hey, all of our houses, me, yeah. uh, because that, that's the prism I'm thinking. I should be thinking through Jeff's lens right now. Um, it sounds like he might have a house that is a block away. Um, yeah, that can absolutely work. You know, if you have lake access, like it, it could. We've chosen to purchase houses that are on the water because we feel like that, you know, we, we try to do like a high end, uh, mm -hmm. you know, stay for our folks. And we think that kind of adds to it. Uh, definitely try to find special, unique properties. Uh, I've definitely stayed in Airbnb that was not directly on the water. And guess what? You walk over there. It's a little bit cheaper on your average daily rate, yeah. you know, so so you have that. And then the other thing that that he kind of asked um, was about the the rentals, um, yep. you know. And I think you're getting ready to go there. Sorry about that. Um, no, that's fine. It, you know, the way that our funding was set up, our funding was not conducive. You know, we didn't pay cash for all these properties. We used private funds to be able to um, buy these house, fix and flip them. So we have short term money on these, uh, and <clears throat> it was just the our, our on-ramp into the end of this business. We did not have, uh, we didn't have long-term rentals. Uh, you know, our first partner didn't have those. Uh, mm -hmm. so we didn't learn it that way. So we learned how to flip houses. So that was kind of the approach we took. Um, and it, it's kind of challenging. And even now, like we have <clears throat> a good amount of experience, it's hard to go from flip, which is short-term money to long-term rentals. Mm -hmm. and even short-term rentals both both short-term rentals and long-term rentals require long-term money and to be able to make that like you know pivot uh mm -hmm. it's hard it's not easy yeah because the thing is is that when you're using short-term money like if you're going to want to keep it you're going to have to use the first strategy well there's also a seasoning period be behind that and you also got to make sure you know with how the loans are going right now it's like well when you get it the rates might be 4%, but when you're selling it, the rates are like 6%. <laughs> so, you know, you don't really know. Um, sometimes it may work and sometimes that's an exit strategy and you have to buy them enough right to, uh, and, and this is the way I've learned that, that when I'm selling a house, I have to price it enough where my buyer, you guys, uh, would, have multiple exit strategies okay if it's fix and flipping great if that's not working if it's not selling in time you know what i'll refinance it out get my money out and use it as a long -term rental, you know or a short-term rental you know whatever the case may be and so it's just different strategy and you may not use that on all of them or some of them but you know it's just a tool in the tool belt so. You know, Randy, I will say, I read that question from Jeff, and <clears throat> uh, I love his questions because these are the same questions that I ask myself. And I would, <laughs> and look, literally, if I could go back, I would love to go back through all our houses and say, that one we'll rent, that one we should have rented, that one we should have rented. Yep. <clears throat> it's also, um, but you're right. I mean, ideally, if you could do the Burr strategy, which is buy you know, rehab, refi, and then rent it and mm -hmm. leave no, I mean, the birth strategy is trying to leave no money in the house. You're getting, yep. and by the time you, you know, refi it, <clears throat> you get all the money back with the rehab mm -hmm. because the appraisal rate was so high, right? Again, appraisal yep. right up value. And then you can, you can rent it out and it's all positive cash flow. So if oh, we yeah. could do that every time you would certainly do it. Otherwise you're still leaving money into the rentals. However, yes. I, I totally agree with Jeff. If I go back in time right now, I would love to pick like, I don't know if it'd be a hundred houses, but I could definitely find you 25 houses that <clears throat> we would put in our portfolio all day long for long-term yeah. rentals. And, and a handful of those for would be great for short-term rentals as well. And if we had done that, we'd probably have some way better cash flow coming in as we go. So so that that's, you know, that's probably, that's something I tell people now, like if I could go back, what would you do if you could go back in time? I would yeah. definitely have picked, you know, siphoned off one, two, three, one out of five, maybe one out of 10, something to put into rentals just to create a cash flow bucket. Yeah. And I, I have that too. I have wholesale deals that I I wish I would have just been able to take down myself. 
the issues you have is your experience, your timing, your cash flow, your whether you can do it, just your timing in life. Okay. No um, doubt. You know, my in, in my case, you know, I'm working on I was working on my a renovation at my personal house so that way like all my money was going towards that. I can't use anything for any rentals or extra projects. So you right. know um you know so it's kind of everyone has their own um path that they need to take they learn everything as they go um and that's why i call it a tool in the tool belt whether you use it or you don't it's still a tool there for you for you to use mm -hmm.